All right. Well, I may be just a minute early or so, but I just wanted to go ahead and go live so we give everybody an opportunity to get logged on. And uh, as most of you know, we're we're in the North Georgia mountains, but uh, I've got the Lone Star over my shoulder here to to show that we're still of where our heart is. Okay, I see one. I'll give it another minute. Are you? Yes. Everything is over. Is that you that's online? Okay, there's two. There's Zach. Good morning, Zach. Good morning. If somebody could let me know. Good morning, Mary and Todd. Uh, sound is good. Thank you, Zach. I know some people are having a little trouble being notified that I'm on live. Uh, I think I see Crystal, and let's see. If you say hello, then I'll see your name there. Otherwise, it's hard to get the little picture sometimes. All right. Well, um, we are. We just had enjoyed a, a, a really nice rain this morning, and the crows seem to like it too. I hope it. I hope the crows aren't aren't drowning me out this morning with the message, but <clears throat> they're just joining in with the joy of the of the gospel. So. Good morning, Donna. All right. Let's see. Love the sound. Okay, awesome. Rana and I think uh, Sharon, I think Fran is with Sharon this morning. I, I think that's right. And David's usually watching. So anyway, I see quite a few people already logged on. I think Melissa's picture's there. So um, and Briscoe and Melissa, we're glad to ever have, we're glad to have everybody here this morning. Um, as you know, we've been we've been uh, looking at um, um, the Song of Songs, and we have one more chapter left. The uh, chapter number eight is a little bit a little bit different in in trying to get to a lot of the meanings out of it. But uh, I felt like that uh, the Lord led me into this message this morning, sort of as a as a way of, of uh, good morning, Lana, uh, building uh, a little more understanding in um, our foundation for chapter eight, which we will do back in Texas next next week. Good morning, Samuel. Uh, hope y'all got a little more rain out in California. Um, all right. Well, the title of the message this morning. This is uh, September eleventh, two thousand twenty-two, and. Um, the title is Jesus, Our Life uh, Giver. And Lord, I just thank you this morning that you have given us life and you want us to have life, not only life, but life more abundantly. That's what you came to give us. And so, Lord, we just ask you that our hearts would be open, uh, that our ear, our spiritual ears would hear what the Holy Spirit's trying to, to give us this morning um, and that you would anoint this word uh, so that the hearers would, would have clear understanding of what's being spoken this morning. So we just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, and uh, we give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All righty. Well, um, if you would, turn in your Bible to uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, that's where the first note is, uh, the first note uh, is uh, having us go to. Um, you know, Jesus is a life-giving spirit, and for all of those that ha are, are believers, He has given us a life that is an exchange life. He, he became our death, He became our sin, so that we could become His righteousness and so that we could have His life and that we could actually have Him living inside of us. Um, and you're going to see something today that's going to sound a little repetitious, but I think it's so, so important for us to get this to, to get this further and further down in our, our the renewal of our mind because we have it in our heart, but um, I mean some of y'all may have it better than me, but I, I need to I need the um, you know the apostle Paul said it's needful that I repeat these things over and over so that so that our understanding would be fruitful, and that uh, good morning David from um, up there in Massachusetts. And uh, so that our, that our understanding would be, our minds would be transformed and we could actually experience and live in what He paid to give us. 
And so um, in Ephesians, what you're going to see is you're going to see a lot of, and I'll try to emphasize it as we go along. So in Ephesians chapter 2, I want to back up. Uh, this is, of course, the Passion Translation. I want to back up to um, verse 5 where it says, Even when we were dead and doomed in our many sins, He united us. Now, this is one version of what we're going to hear a lot of this. He united us into the very life of Christ. What a, what a, a, a miraculous, uh, divine thing that, that, that was. And He saved us by His wonderful grace. Um, and then he took, he took it beyond salvation. He actually, verse 6, He raised us up with Christ, the exalted one, and we as ascended with Him into the glorious perfection and authority of the heavenly realm. I hope you have your little charts this morning because the heavenly realm, the third realm, is our dwelling place forever. Amen? Anyone want to say amen? No, not, amen. I've got a one-person amen section this morning. Um, and she's sitting over here. I'm pointing this way, but it's, it looks, it's, it's opposite or whatever that, whatever you're seeing. So, for we, it says, are now co-seated as one with Christ. And I love the footnote on that verse, verse 6, and this is in the 2020 edition. Uh, it's to be placed or seated in heaven means that we have, been given, we have been given the perfection and authority to be there. So we didn't just kind of stroll in on our own volition. He gave us the position. He raised us up. He placed us there because we, are, we were given the perfection and the authority to be, to be there. So we have this morning, uh, according to this realm and the truth of the gospel, we have, we're in this, the, 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 we're, we're the court, in the courts of heaven, we're, we have had a Supreme Court ruling in our favor. Um, so it says in verse 7, throughout the coming ages, we will be the visible display. You know, he has a trophy case, and we're all trophies in that trophy case, uh, of, his, of the infinite riches of his grace and kindness, which he showered upon us in Jesus Christ. And m most people are familiar with this next section here, um, but it's, it just, it's just such a beautiful truth. For, for by grace you have been saved by faith, conviction of the truth, the testimony of Jesus, His exchanged life. Um, <clears throat> nothing you did could ever earn this salvation. So nothing you do could ever take away from that salvation. Amen? If one is true, the other is true. For it was the love gift, it was a love gift um, from God that brought us to Christ. So no one will ever be able to boast for salvation is never, never, never a reward for good works or human striving. Lord, help us get over that, human striving. Uh, verse 10, and this is, the first, this is the first section of your notes. Verse 10 says, We have become His poetry. This is mentioned a lot in the Song of Songs. Um, a recreated, recreated people. So that's, that's another one of the, the forms that we're going to, the words we're going to use, the repetitions we're going to use. Uh, united, recreated, uh, actually, we're going we're to see several versions of that. And the next one's right here in this verse. That will fulfill the destiny He has given each of us, for we are joined to Jesus. Isn't that a wonderful uh, truth that we're joined to Jesus, the Anointed One? Even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny and the good works we would do to fulfill it. And notice that's good works, but it's not dead works. Good works are those things that come as a fruit in our life. As we're united, as we're one with Him, good works are part of the expression of that uh, reality of who we are. And then I want to go from to verse 13. Um, Look at you now. Everything is new. Although you were once dis distant and far away from God, now you have been brought, I like this word, delightfully close to Him. Through the sacred blood of Jesus, you have actually been, here it is again, united to Christ. United to Christ. Now, let's go to verse 18. <clears throat> and now, because we are united to Christ, I hope I'm giving you enough time to find the Scripture and now because uh, we are united to Christ, we both, that's both Jew and Gentile, have equal and direct access in the realm of the Holy Spirit 
to come before the Father. Um, and then verse 19 says, So you are not foreigners uh, or guests. We're not guests in the presence of God. We're, we're children. But rather you are the children of the city of the holy ones. That's, you find that uh, over in Hebrews 12. With all the rights as family members of the household of God. I, I, I mean, what a family. What, what, a, what an expression Paul gives us that we're family. We're all, we're all one family uh, the body of Christ, members of God's household. Um, and then uh, he actually uh, clarifies a little bit more in verse 22 of chapter 2, where he says, uh, God, th this means that God is transforming each one of you into the Holy of Holies, His dwelling place, uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit living in you, living in you. And I wanted to look at one more uh, Um, verse, verse 6 uh, of the next chapter, chapter 3. Uh, uh, let's back up to verse 5. There has never been a generation that has been given the detailed understanding of this glorious and divine mystery. Until now. Everybody say now. now. Uh, he kept it a secret until this generation. And of course we're talking, he's talking about, Paul's talking here, but I, he's also reviving and, and giving greater and greater clarity to this mystery, even in our generation. God is revealing it uh, only now to His sacred apostles and prophets by the Holy Spirit. Here's the secret. The gospel of grace has made you, non-Jewish believers, into co-heirs of His promise through your, here it is again, through your union with Him. Union with Him. And you have become members uh, uh, and you have now become members of His body, one with the Anointed One. There, there are so many. I, I, you know, I just had to limit the verses that I use. I, I, I wanted to put 1 Corinthians. You might put it in your notes there. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 says, He who is joined to the Lord, here it is again, joined to the Lord, is one spirit with Him. We are, we are not separate from Him any longer. We're one spirit with the Lord. Amen? Can I get another, can I get a good amen over here from my amen section? Okay. Uh, all right. And this was Paul's passion that we understand that chapter two of, of Ephesians is quickly, is, is, is com becoming one of my favorite uh, chapters because once you, drink, once you get a revelation of the WWW of chapter one, which is the will of the Father, uh, to bring us into His family through the work of the Son. And now the witness, I'm getting an amen from the crows out here too, a witness from the Holy Spirit to that truth from inside us. Amen? amen? All right. Now, um, um, let's go, uh, the next verse, the next verse in your notes is Colossians. And you're going to hear a lot of uh, similarities here, but... Uh, the more faith comes by what? Faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of, of Christ or you could say uh, that, our, that, he, that the hearing and of the word uh, that we have because of Christ, because of what He has done. Okay, amen. So let's go to Colossians. Um, let, me get, let me find it here. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, in verse uh, 26, here he is. This, is. this is the same person, Paul, the Apostle Paul, saying again, there is a divine mystery, he says in verse 26. I hope I'm giving everybody time to get there. Uh, and I love, I love the, the Passion Translation, the Aramaic. Paul keeps saying these things in a different way. A secret surprise. Uh, that has been concealed from the world for generations, but now, everybody say now. now. Now it's being revealed, and I love the way he goes on to say, he's, it's being revealed, unfolded, uh, and manifested. Now that, then I love that. Manifested for every holy believer to what? To experience. Everybody say experience. 
He wants us to experience this divine mystery of Christ in us. And he goes on to say in verse 27, Living within you is the Christ who floods you with the expectation of glory, which is his goodness. Um, it's, it's who he is, his glory. He wants, to, he, wants us to, he wants us to experience who he is in our, in our spirit. This mystery of Christ embedded within us, here it is in a different way of saying it, He's, Christ is actually embedded within us, becomes a heavenly treasure chest of hope. Uh, and this is not the hope, that, that this hope will never, uh, yes, amen Donna, never disappoint. Filled with the riches of glory for His people and God wants everyone to know it. That's our, that's as ministers of reconciliation, it's our, it's, it's, you know, our, our um, um, mission statement of our fellowship is to know him and make him known. So he wants, God, God's not, uh, he's, he's not willing that any, it says it in Titus, not willing that any should perish, but all would come to the knowledge of the truth. So this is God's desire and he wants everyone to know, but he want, want, what he wants them to know is the mystery of Christ in them. He doesn't want to try to come in with, with something, a, 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 a different type of message. Because he says in verse 28, Christ is our message. We, we preach to awaken hearts and bring every person into the full understanding of truth. The understanding is, is, being, is because of transformation. It's already been given to us uh, because we are complete in Christ. Our spirit is exactly the same. We are one, one spirit with the Lord. Amen? Uh, and it's um, to bring every person into full understanding of the truth. It has been become my inspiration and passion in ministry to labor with tireless intensity, with His power flowing through me to present to every believer the revelation of of His perfect One, of being His perfect One in Jesus Christ. So you already have a perfect new creation, recreated spirit. You're one with, with you know, you're one with Him. Uh, you're, he's living within you. Uh, and so all, all of these things is, is so important for us to understand. I don't know if I, if I lost y'all for a second. We're on a Wi-Fi here. Did, I, did you lose me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I saw a message come up that we're going live, and I thought, well, I hope we've been going live for longer than, than uh, up till now. So uh, when it says that the heavenly, in verse 26 and 27, when it talks about the heavenly treasure chest, if you go back and look at the title of the letter to the Hebrews in the Passion Translation, it's titled Heaven's Riches. So that's what he wants us to have. And, and this isn't in your notes, but I wanted to put it there. Look, Flip on over to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Um, um, Verse 3 says, your, cru your crucifixion with Christ has severed the tide of this life, and now your, your true life is hidden away in God. Here's another way to say it. Our, the, our true life is hidden away in God in Christ. And I love this part right here, and I know uh, um, uh, it, there's, there's several other verses that say the same thing. Uh, Susan, if Susan and Wayne are watching and and as Christ Himself is seen for who He really is, who you really are will also be revealed, for you are now one with Him in His glory. So there it is again. You're one with Him in His glory. 1 John 4, 17 says the same thing. As He is, so are we when we get to heaven. Is that right? No, it's in this world, in this world. So that's uh, uh, revealed, unfolded, and manifested. That's... Um, the, I want the, the manifest, manifested destiny that, that He has for all of us. And, and that's what the Holy Spirit wants for us as well. Amen? Now, um, okay, now let's go, back, let's go back to Ephesians one more time. This time Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, starting with verse 23. 
Now it's time. Is that, is, can I get an amen? Yeah. Now it's time to be made new by every revelation that's been given to you. Uh, the spirit of your revelation is what the, the, the footnote says here. Now again, this is not, this is, now's the time to be, but every revelation means that our thought, our, our mind is being transformed into the reality of who we are. And to be transformed as you embrace the glorious Christ within as your new life and live again, here it is, in union with Him, one spirit with Him, uh, recreated, joined to Jesus. All of these are expressions or something that if we're going to really grasp and understand uh, what uh, Solomon wrote by the Holy Spirit in Song of Solomon chapter 8, we really have to get, let the Holy Spirit bring this reality to us um, about this uh, transformation and this union we have with Him. Uh, for it's, It says, For uh, God has, here it is again, recreated you all over again. We're not a renovation. Deborah likes to watch these house, house renovation shows. But we're not a renovation. We are a new creation in Christ. That's 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, there it is again, in Christ, he is a new creation. Uh, behold, all, all the old things that passed away, and behold, all things. What's the Greek word for all? All. All, uh, all things have become new. And it says here, look at this. Uh, in his perfect righteousness... And now you belong, here is another way of saying it, you belong to Him in the realm of true holiness. True holiness is, is, a, is an inheritance we have from our Father. We have His holiness because we have Christ living in us. We have Christ's righteousness. We have Christ's holiness. Amen? Yeah. Uh, so um, now let's go, uh, let's go now to Romans would you keep up with the time for me? I don't know where, where we are. Twenty-two minutes. Twenty-two into it. Okay, let's go to Romans chapter one. Um, this is one of my favorite things that Paul wrote in the beginning of this this amazing letter that he wrote. Um, but he says uh, in verse seventeen. Uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 17, this again is in the Passion Translation. This gospel, and I put above that in my notes, I put the gospel because it's not just, this is not uh, this gospel, meaning that, there are other, that there's others. It's the gospel, the true gospel, unveils a continual revelation of God's righteousness. So, this is a work. Now we know who, who is doing this, by the way. Who is, who is continually uh, unveiling this revelation to us? It's the Holy Spirit. And if you want a verse on that, it's uh, John chapter 16 uh, and verse 10. John 16 verse 10 says, To us who have believed the gospel and have been recreated in Christ, it says the Holy Spirit is, con is, con is convicting us of of the righteousness of God that we have as a gift, the righteousness, the same righteousness that Christ has. And the Holy Spirit's job in us is not to convict us of our sin, but to convict us of our righteousness because the more convicted we are that we're in Him, we're of Him, we're recreated in Him, we're joined to Him, we're one spirit with Him, we're united with Him, the more the Holy Spirit can convict us of that, the more we're going to live in the, um, and we're going to live in the revelation, the unfolding, and the manifestation of that truth. It'll begin to come out of us more and more as we cling to that as our only identity. We don't have two identities anymore. Uh, we had an old identity in the first Adam. Now we have a new identity in the last Adam. There's never going to be another Adam, by the way. Jesus was the last Adam. Uh, Adam was a living soul. All of us were born the first time through his seed. And when you're born again, Jesus is called a life-giving spirit. So we're joined, we're born again of his spirit into his body. Amen? 
And that can never be changed. That, that is what Peter calls a, a, a seed that's incorruptible. It's not corruptible. And so I'm so, I'm so thankful for that truth. We can't lose what we didn't gain. <laughs> we didn't gain it by what we did. We, we received it by what Jesus did. So, therefore, we can't lose something that's been given to us as a gift. Amen? So, hallelujah to that. Amen. So, uh, and what I want you to see here in Romans 17 is when we get that conviction of righteousness, and it, 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 look what happens is this, is this is what the Holy Spirit is trying to do right here in this second sentence. And it moves us... Um, well, I, I miss the uh, continual revelation of God's righteousness, a perfect righteousness given to us when we believe. And that, again, John 16, verse uh, 10, um, talks about that con the conviction of the, of the Holy Spirit. And it moves us from receiving life through faith. Okay, so we all start there. We have to receive life through faith to the power of living by faith. Um, and it means... Um, if you look at the footnote there, uh, Jesus is the living Torah. Um, and he's the, he, he alone brings us into salvation's power. Uh, and uh, it, 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 So we're moving from an impotent faith to the explosive faith of the gospel of Christ. So this is an explosive faith, an explosive righteousness that causes us to, according to um, what it says um, in... Um, Romans uh, 5.17, Paul said, uh, it, those that receive an abundance of grace and of, and of the free gift of His righteousness shall reign in life. But it doesn't stop there. Shall reign in life through the One, Christ Jesus. So our reigning is through Him and that reigning escalates when our mind is transformed to the reality of who we are and we, be, and we continuously receive this uh, unveiling and continual revelation by the Holy Spirit into our hearts and into our lives. Amen? Uh, now, uh, and this is what the Scripture means when it says, we are right with God through life-giving faith. Jesus is the life-giver, and he, and he gives us life, His life-giving faith. It's not... Uh, it's through faith that the righteous enter into life. Amen? Now, um, so now let's go, to, let's, go to second, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Second Timothy. Chapter 1. So far, I've got all the scriptures right. Uh, that, that's a kind of a miracle there. Uh, now, it says in verse 9 um, that He gave us resurrection life and drew us to Himself by His holy calling on our lives. And it wasn't because of any good that we've done, but by His divine pleasure. I love that. By His divine... This was the Father's divine pleasure and will. If you want to go back and look at that, it's, for, it's Ephesians 1, verses 4 through 6, where you see the will of the Father. His divine pleasure and marvelous grace that confirmed, again, look what it says here, confirmed our union with the anointed Jesus. Here's another way of saying it. Uh, join, join to Jesus. Where uh, confirm He confirms our union with the anointed Jesus by the Holy Spirit in in our hearts. Amen. According to Romans chapter eight, even before time began, this was His divine call on our life, uh, and this truth is now being unveiled by the revelation of the anointed, which is Jesus, our le our life giver. That's that's the title of the message today. Uh, our Jesus, our life-giving Spirit, uh, who has, and, and I, I want you to just to see the, the magnitude 
of this this unveiling of what he wants to unveil in our hearts in our in our transformation of our mind who has dismantled death he has dismantled death uh, obliterating i love the aramaic uh, translation of this obliterating all its effects on our lives uh, that's what the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ has done and has manifested here again it's it's first it's revealed then it begins to be unfolded and has manifested his mortal immortal life here it is in us his mortal life in us by what by the gospel the power of the gospel the good news of salvation through Christ it's the good news. It's the glad tidings um, for all people. The angels announced when Jesus was being born, it's the, the, behold, we bring glad tidings that will bring joy to all people because tonight in the city of David is born a, a Savior, Christ the Lord. Amen? Uh, second, um, second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 uh, says that He took our place uh, in death so that we could take his place in life. Amen? He put our death, he put death away. He, he dismantled it uh, and he obliterated its effects in our lives. So death has no power over us anymore. The enemy has no more power in our lives. Amen? We don't have a spirit of fear this morning. We have a spirit of uh, righteousness and joy in the Holy Spirit. Righteousness, peace, and joy is what we have by the Holy Spirit in the power of the gospel operating in our lives. It produces uh, righteousness, peace, and joy. And also it produces the fruit of the Spirit, which is uh, love is the first fruit, but joy is the second. So there's a joy um, in knowing. There's a, uh, there's a peace when you believe and there's a joy when you really know it. When you really know this. And that's what He wants us to know. He wants us to know this deep an invisible union, um, this union that we have in Christ, um, and this oneness we have with Him, this recreation that we are in Him, that we're joined to Him, we're united to Christ. Uh, Christ is embedded within us. We are one spirit with the Lord. I keep saying this over and over again because it's so important for our understanding to be to have this um, manifestation in our in our tra in transformation. To the reality that we have. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, we're going to go to one other place and then we're going to have communion. How far are we in now? We are 32. 32 minutes in. Okay. Uh, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and uh, verse 1. 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2 and verse 1. Now, I want you to uh, in fact, I put that above that above by the notes there on, in that particular verse. Make, make this personal this morning. You know, this gospel is a personal gospel. It's not something that's general. Uh, yes, it does. It does. Uh, it is available to to all whosoever will. Uh, but this is personal, uh, and it creates a personal response in us that generates. The dynamo, the dynamo, the dynamo, what's it say in Greek? Dunamis. The dunamis power of the Holy Spirit that begins to generate uh, that that truth, uh, that explosion of that truth in our in our in transforming our minds as we behold Jesus. It says that we're changed uh, from one level of glory to another as we behold Him. The enemy would the, he wants us to walk away from that mirror. Beholding as in a mirror, it says. He wants us to walk away and forget who we are. But that doesn't change. Even, though, even if we walk away and, for, and forget for a little while in our mind who we, are, who we really are, the truth of who we really are, it doesn't change who we really are. It just begins to limit our awareness of it. And that's what, that's what this gospel, the power of the Holy Spirit wants to do. Is He doesn't want us to ever uh, lose that... Uh, first love relationship where we're constantly beholding Him. He is our righteousness. He is our peace. He is our sanctification. He is our redemption. 
Amen. So in 2 Timothy chapter 1, let's make, make this personal. He's, he's talking to Timothy. This is the last word, the last letter that Paul ever wrote uh, in the New Testament. And he wrote it to his son in the faith, Timothy. And I would say he's writing it to all of his sons in faith because we all are sons in faith of, of Paul originally going to the Gentiles. So he, he would say, put your name in here in this place, uh, in place of this. Like for me, I would say, Eric, my dear son, this is what Paul would write to me. Live your life empowered by God's free-flowing grace. Free-flowing grace. It's not something that you can um, get extra of by, you know, how good you're living or how much you're, whatever you're doing. It's a free-flowing grace that's available anytime, all the time, uh, and he wants it to be continu continually free-flowing, which is your true strength. Yes. This grace is our strength. Yes. Uh, in our weakness, his strength comes in. The Apostle Paul had a lot to boast in in the flesh, but he found out it has no power. It, has, it had no power. Uh, the law had no power in his life except to condemn and make him proud. That's the only thing. That's the only two things. You can be mean or miserable. Um, but that's all you can get uh, with, under the, a life under the law. Uh, because any confidence you have in that is going to be uh, short-lived and you'll realize at some point that you can't ever succeed in being righteous in your own self. Amen? So, but look at this. It's uh, the, the, the free-flowing flowing grace, which is your true strength, found in the anointing of Jesus, in, in, in the anointing of Jesus, and what? Your union with Him. So guess what? What is the um, source of you living your life empowered by God's free-flowing grace? What's the source of that? What's the, uh, what's the uh, condition? Your union with Him. Now, so I hope by now, after what we've talked about this morning, that there's no doubt about that, that reality of your union with Him, that you're joined to Him, that you're one spirit with Him, that you have His righteousness, that you have His holiness, that you have His likeness in every way. There's no distinction between our DNA spiritually and, and Jesus' DNA. Amen? What a, what a wonderful truth. And again, that free-flowing grace is a... Is a is uh, Romans 5.17 when, re when we're receiving, continually receiving uh, that free-flowing grace uh, and that gift of righteousness and the conviction of righteousness by the Holy Spirit, then we begin to reign. Uh, you know, the thing that we need, that I want to reign in more than anything else uh, that, that the, the Holy Spirit's revealing to me is reigning over fear. He's not given us a spirit of fear, but a lot of times when we walk away from the mirror, uh, then the spirit of fear tries to come in and it tries to get us back into thinking that there's some kind of separation. But thank God Romans chapter 8 starts off in verse 1 saying there's now no condemnation to those that are in Christ. Why? Because Jesus was condemned in our place. 2 Corinthians 5.21 the same chapter, chapter 8, Romans 8, the last verse, it says there's no, there's no separation between us and God that in Christ. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So those, are, those, those realities are the, the, uh, the two slices of bread between all the 17 times in the middle of that sandwich, the meat in Roman eight, Romans chapter 8. The meat is uh, the, the 17 times that the Holy Spirit is giving witness to the reality of who we are and, and our position in Christ. Amen? That is, that is the reality. I spend a lot of time looking at that because it's it, it just not by accident that Paul started and ended that chapter, even though they weren't put in chapters. There's an there's a, there's a opening and closing to that sandwich that's so wonderful uh, that the Holy Spirit wants to make real to us. He wants to make this personal to us in every way. Amen? Amen. Now, um, I want to, if you, since we have, what time, how much? 40. We're 40 minutes in, so we've got just a couple more minutes here. Would you, would you turn with me 
Um, I'll try to make it a little shorter than than uh, when I'm in person there. We'll we'll be back next week uh, in our our normal uh, live message. But go to go to um, Psalms 17. I believe it's Psalm 17. Let me make sure. Psalms chapter 17. Yeah, there, here it is, uh, Psalm 7, chapter 17 and verse 15. Psalm 17 and verse 15 says, As for me, and everybody's saying, as for me. All right, let's see. Please agree for healing and infection in Fran's brother's body. Herb, Herb is his name. He's in the hospital. So yes, we just, we just declare and agree together as the body of Christ at, at Grace Center, Houston, and our families all over the country. We agree uh, concerning Fran's brother, Herb, uh, that you would bring healing and wholeness because we just got through reading the truth that, that Jesus, our life giver, has dismantled death and he's obliterated all of its effects in our lives. So he's obliterated the effects of this infection in Herb's body. In Jesus' name, we, we, we say that. We agree in, in prayer together. Amen, amen. Now, uh, chapter 17, verse 15 says, As for me, because I'm innocent, uh, you know, the law in this country says that we're innocent until proven guilty. Uh, but see, for us in Christ, we're innocent because G Jesus took the guilty, took our guilt and was punished for our wrong uh, to, and gave us His perfect uh, righteousness. Uh, my, my friend in California sent me the gavel. I don't have it with me here. Uh, but it says, case closed. Ca the case is closed. Because we are innocent by what? By the precious blood of Jesus. Amen? By the precious blood of Jesus. Uh, now, um, In, in chapter 17 of Psalms, verse 15, As for me, because I'm innocent, I will see your face. That word means to see a vision. See, we, we, we get to be, we get to, to see. It, it says he told, he told Moses, remember, uh, Moses was a servant under the law system. But he said, no one will see my face and live. But see, now we get, we are face to face. We are face to face with Him. Uh, I will see your face until, and He's saying this like, like 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, beholding as in a mirror. He says, until I see you for who you really are. Until I see you for who you really are. And then look what He says after that. I will be satisfied in an awakening of your likeness in me. See, the awakening is happening by the power of the Holy Spirit right now. All, what, what I've been preaching to you is the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am preaching Christ and Him crucified. That crucifixion did something. It meant something and it did something for all of us. We were co-crucified, we were co-buried, we were co-raised, we were co-ascended and we were co-seated with Him in heavenly places in this third realm uh, we are we are seated with him. That's why there's a chair up there. It's 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 the chair that Jesus is seated in, with in, but we are seated with him there. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, Amen. So uh, that is uh, w that's my life, and I know all of our lives will find satis our satisfaction when we know. Um, when we see His likeness in us, when we when we are beholding to the point where our mind is trans our, our mind is transformed to the reality of who we are, the new creation in Christ, and we become we have this awakening of that likeness in our in our understanding to where we have that satisfaction mm -hmm. that we're satisfied 
and we're only satisfied by that revelation of truth. That's the only thing that will bring satisfaction to us. The whole world system is looking for satisfaction, um, but they can't get no satisfaction, whatever that song says. Because there is no satisfaction guaranteed in anything that's of the world system. That was the lie that the devil told Adam and Eve, that they could find satisfaction and be like God apart from him. But that's a lie, and it's being proven out all over the world uh, by anybody that's seeking that. Eventually, they see the futility. I'm seeing people, seems like every week, people are jumping off buildings and because they're looking for a satisfaction guaranteed in this, world, in this life. But there's only one satisfaction guaranteed, and that's to be in Christ. And that's what David was, was, was saying, and that's what we are saying. David, his name means beloved. And when we know that we're His beloved, where are we in time? Yeah, 45. 45 minutes. When we know that we are His beloved, um, and we know that He loves us, that our Father loves us passionately with the same love that He loves His Son, Jesus, when we, when we awake, awaken to that, then life, our life can be satisfied. Our, heart, our hearts can come in line with our, the renewal of our mind to a satisfaction and a hope that's guaranteed. See, we, 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 are, we have a hope that doesn't disappoint because we have an inheritance that cannot be taken away. It cannot be reduced. It cannot go, it cannot, no, no, nobody can come in and steal it. It's, a, it's an eternal reality of who we are and what we have. Amen? Amen. So now let's take, let's take uh, communion, if you have your communion. Uh, I've got mine here. Deborah's got hers there. Uh, what I, what I want to do with communion today is kind of just, just flip back to uh, that second, that second uh, Timothy 1, 9 and 10. Um, I just want to talk about this one more time that when Jesus took upon himself when took, he took upon flesh he had a purpose in mind for doing that and that, and that was he wanted to take all of the, the death and all of the defects all of the, the effects uh, like he says in, in, uh, in uh, 2 Timothy 1, 9 and 10 he, wanted, he came to dismantle death and he came to obliterate all of its effects on our lives and to manifest his immortal life in us by, by the gospel. So when we partake of this, we are in re, taking in remembrance of the fact that Jesus came in a fleshly body and everywhere he went, he said, I came to, to, that I might do the works of that my father, my, the, the works that he, came to, to, he, he sent me to do. And that was to, to, to take away death and all of its effects. And so he, he proved that out. Uh, you know, when, when there was somebody dead, he raised them up. Uh, and when there was somebody sick, he never, he never said, well, how's your life going these days? When, uh, when it was time to bring healing to somebody, it was always uh, the, the Pharisees were always frustrated about uh, the deserving of healing. But Jesus was never frustrated or misled by the reason that we, we don't deserve healing any more than we deserve salvation. But Jesus didn't come to give us healing because we deserved it. Amen. He came to give it to us because He loves us and He, and he wanted to take away all of this into His body. Uh, all of the, the effects. He wanted to obliterate. And everywhere He went, Matthew um, 8.17 8, is, is where, it's, where it, it literally says he took uh, when Peter's mother-in-law uh, was healed and all the people that came to him, he took, uh, according to, to Isaiah 53, he took all of our sicknesses and diseases into his body. The same way he took all of our sins. That's why he could say, uh, which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or rise up and be healed. They were the same to him because they were both the same, both the same effect that he came to give us. He came to be our escape from death, uh, the, our, our, our forever death is, is the way he puts it in one translation uh, in the Aramaic. 
He came to take away our forever death and give us a life in our body that's, that's because of his, his torn body. So, Lord, we thank you for your body. We thank you for the sacrifice of your body and what you came to do. And you told, you told everyone everywhere you went that, this was the, that you might work the works of, of your Father, which is to take away death and, and all of its effects in our lives and to give us eternal life not just when we go to heaven, but here. He wanted to manifest that immortal life of His body into our bodies. And so, Lord, we thank You for Your body and what it did, what it does for our bodies. And we make this personal. We make this personal. Lord, this, this communion that we're taking with You is in Your kingdom. You said You were not going to take it again until You took it with us in Your kingdom. Well, You're in Your kingdom and so are we because we're co-seated with You. So we're receiving this communion uh, from your hand this morning. You're, per you're giving it to us personally to partake. And we thank you, Lord, for, the, for the, 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 the presence, your presence with us to make that real to us, that you're handing us this. this is, you're saying to us, this is my body. Take and eat. For my body was given for you. Thank you, Lord. And then he said he took the he took the cup and when he when he when he prayed he says this this is the, the New Testament in my blood. Take this in remembrance of, remembrance of me. And when you do, this is to remember that his blood has made us perfect, perfectly holy, perfectly righteous, and perfectly forgiven. His blood has not just covered our sins. His blood has covered, has taken our sins away and taken away the guilt and the stain. It says it's, He's removed all of our guilty stains. In, in Jesus' name, he's, to, he's taken away. So now we can have a conscience that's clean and clear because we have nothing that, that remains of, our, of, of the old person and the old life. And so, Lord, we thank You for Your blood. And as we partake of this, we're thanking you that this is your this is the New Testament that's that's sealed by your blood forever, forever in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We doing okay, Tom? What? Fifty two minutes. Okay. I do want to the last section of your notes. Uh, and I want to say this as I'm as I'm finishing this. Uh, I started to sing in my heart. Uh, you know, what a fellowship! What a joy divine! Leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. Um, it, this this is the fellowship in a, in that produces joy. We're fellowship. We just fellowshiped in the sufferings of Christ, and that was what Paul meant when he said the fellowship of his sufferings. We are we we just fellowshiped and what His death has given to us. What a joy divine. Amen? What, what a joy divine. His own arm brought forth salvation. There was no other way except for Him to become flesh, and then His own arm is what brought salvation to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to say, if you, if, I hope that you're able to get these notes. I'm trying to figure out a way. I know we have them when we're meeting in live, you know, live that we have this. I put them on the you know, attached to the message um, on Facebook. But I know some people can print it off there and some can't. But I, I just want to figure out if there's a way that I can get the notes to everybody uh, so that you'll have these. Because I I don't know if, you know, I want to show you this. Between the time that I'd finished this before I left Houston to till this morning, I've got, I've got notes written all over the place here. Amen? Uh, so I just I think that the the notes help us remind us when we go back and look at it again, it keeps reminding us over and over again. Amen. Uh, let's see, man. Oh, thank you. Uh, now let me let me do this apostolic blessing. This is out of Hebrews chapter thirteen, and I believe it's an apostolic. I mean, it's called that by title, but I believe Paul wrote Hebrews. I agree with the early church fathers about that. It says, Now may, God, the, may the God who brought us peace by raising from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, so that He would be the great shepherd of His flock, 
and by the power of the blood of the eternal covenant, may he work. That's why that's bold and underlined. May he work perfection into every part of you, giving you all that you need to fulfill your destiny. Our, our destiny is sonship. And may he express. In other words, look what it says. May he work and may he express through you. He wants to be our expression. He wants to express through us as we yield to the reality and identity of who we are now all that is excellent and pleasing to Him through what? Here we go one last time. Through your life union with Jesus, the Anointed One, who is to receive all glory forever and ever and ever. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Well, I, I, I believe this is, and you may have to go back and look at this a couple of times, but I believe this will give us a better foundation to, I'm already, I mean, I'm working on uh, Rome, uh, Song of Songs chapter 8, but I believe this will give us a better foundation to uh, really grasp the heart of what the, the, the Father wants us and the Son and the Holy Spirit want us to understand as we finish up the Song of Songs next next. Uh, Sunday back in Texas. So love y'all. Thank you for being with us this morning. Um, always enjoy uh, the, the opportunity to be together, even as even if it's this way. Uh, life giving spirit. Amen, Kim. Uh, and just enjoyed being with y'all. I hope you. I, 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 you probably can hear the crows singing out here. It's been consistent all morning. Uh, but thank you, Lord, for your for your truth, and may it may it guide us continually and renew our minds to the re, the realization of Jesus, our life giver. Amen, amen. Love y'all. We'll see you next week uh, in Webster, Texas. Again, some of you will be, of course, online. God bless you.